Chief guest and eminent nuclear scientist of the Atomic Energy Commission Research Center, Padma Vibhuti, Dr. Raghunath of IIT Delhi, Shri Sweet, Chairman of Board of uh, RCE, Dr. Preeti Bajaj Institute, members of faculty members, HODs, students, proud parents, a very good morning to all of you. It is a great privilege to die today with two centuries of our country in the ceremony of G.H. Raisoni College. Dr. Anil Kakodka successfully steered India's nuclear energy program, but also has been a great pillar of strength. And I have witnessed it being in government of India then to entire government establishment in its uh, endeavors to enter the prestigious club of nuclear powers of the world. I feel honored today to be with him and also with another eminent doyen of engineering research and uh, eminent administrator, Dr. Raghunath Ji Shivgakar. Both of them have brought laurels to our country and also being son of soils of Maharashtra, great honor to Maharashtra. We are immensely proud of you, sirs. First graduation day is a landmark occasion in the life of this institute. It marks the realization of dreams achieved through commitment, innovation, and hard work of the founding fathers about whom just Preeti ji illustrated in her speech. This budding institution has now come up and today we have the first graduation day. My warm greetings and congratulations to all the graduates with a special word of compliments to those who would be receiving awards today, awards and medals, and to those who may not have won it today but who are going to win the same medals in the future. I also would like to share the joyous moments with their proud parents who I know would remember this day with much greater fondness than the graduating students. The occasion sometimes is called commencement because you are commencing your journey and translating your education for the benefit of the larger society. May every one of you realize your potential. May every one of you contribute productively in the nation life to make not only this country but the entire world a better place to live. Today is a moment of pride for all of you as you have graduated from this prestigious G.H. Rayasuni College of Engineering, which is a leading technical institute of entire central India. This institute has achieved very good recognition for quality and innovation in a short span of time. It is one of the proud assets of Rashtra Santa Tukrodi Maharaj Nagpur University. Autonomy of institution is very closely and directly proportionate to quality education and quality comes after consistent efforts and after adopting benchmark practices. Today's teachers and students have to come out of the conventional education practices. Outside the formal education, a new world is waiting for all of you, where no fixed, fixed trajectory is defined, neither of any branch nor of any specific problem. The real engineering would be application of various tools to various problems encountered in, this, encountered in this society and which are not listed in any book, any textbook, and are not even defined properly. My graduate friends, you will be looked upon by society, not only just for doing sheer engineering, the technical skills which you have learned. You are the future of the country. The country looks upon you for re-engineering, re-engineering business practices, re-engineering the way 
we perform in our institutions, the way we perform in our organizations. And we are also looked upon for the social re-engineering. Bring and include the class which have been deprived from the development, from the benefits of development, which have been marginalized. So this inclusive growth and this effort to bring prosperity to the classes out of this development matrix is the challenge which India is going to thrust on you. Dear students, my message to all of you is to believe in yourself. Don't let your fears ever overwhelm your desires. Don't be afraid of change or don't ever be unwilling to change. Your journey through your life is just beginning to unfold. Enjoy this journey wherever it takes you and I'm very sure it will take you to the greater heights. Find your passion in life, take control of your life, be on a driver's seat, don't be driven, navigate your own path. Live with purpose and live to achieve something concrete, something solid, not only for you but for entire society. Respect yourself and others, avoid self righteousness and always be kind. While giving my best wishes, I would like to focus on consolidation of knowledge and skills acquired all these days. Use this knowledge and experience to your advantage and be successful in the challenging job market. While saying all this, I know the question bothers you about the persistent issue of degrees, which are a natural corollary once you are receiving your passing out certificates. I have taken over recently. I can only assure you that I will do my best to resolve all the issues and get the degrees conferred to you as early as possible. <clears throat> Before I conclude, I would like to once again congratulate the Institute and all the faculty members and HODs in general and the director, Piti Bajajji, and the chairman, BOG Sunil Rasoniji in particular, who have very nicely conceptualized the entire event and made this graduation day possible. Thanks to all of you. Thanks for being good audience. Jai Maharashtra. Ed, scientist, guide and mentor, Dr. Kakodkar, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Rast Santatikuloji Maharaj University, Nagpur, Honorable Chairman, Board of Governors, Sri Sunil Raisoni Ji, Director of Raisoni College of Engineering, Dr. Preeti Bajaj, all the members of the Academic Council, members of the Senate, all dignitaries present for this graduation day ceremony, faculty, staff, students, their parents, ladies and gentlemen. I am indeed honored and delighted to be amongst you on this very special and auspicious occasion, the first graduation day ceremony of GHI Sony College of Engineering. Graduation day is a solemn occasion in everybody's life. My hearty congratulations to all graduating students for achieving their goals of getting an engineering degree. I also congratulate the parents of the new graduating students for their sacrifice and never-ending support to their wards. The faculty also deserves a word of praise for transforming a raw material into a finished product. Although the students entering in engineering education are of good academic quality, without proper training and mentoring, their potential cannot be realized. The faculty selflessly carries out this job of creating tomorrow's technocrats, engineers in the professional field. After getting autonomy, Raiswani College of Engineering has modified its curriculum to meet the standards of Washington Accord. And many of you might be knowing that very recently, just two weeks ago, the India has become the permanent signatory of Washington Accord. This is an indication of the quality consciousness. I congratulate the college authorities for this very important step. The graduating students will realize the importance of this step 
when they get into the professional world. The research, publication, and the overall growth of the college is highly commendable. Now let me talk to the graduating students. Normally in the graduation ceremony, it is expected that we address the students and give them a word of advice. Somewhere I have read a very interesting quote. A bird sitting on a tree has no fear of fall, not because it is sitting on a solid branch, but because it has faith in its wings. The high quality education is your wings. And now you have no fear of falling while gliding all over the world. Let us not confuse between the education and the course content. The education is combination of logical reasoning, analytical and experimental skills, professional ethos, time management, and many other. You may forget the content which you got in your curriculum, but the education will take you forward irrespective of your discipline and work environment. Every young mind is full of curiosity. It has a fire to do something in the world. It is also sensitive towards its surrounding. However, as we grow old, the external factors suppress this curiosity, <clears throat> reduce the sensitivity. Let this not happen to you. The knowledge is infinite, but quickly, in today's world, this whole knowledge is available to you at the quick click of the computer mouse. The graduation is not an end of education, but is a gate to this vast knowledge which is still to be acquired. Remember the knowledge always makes you humble, sensitive, polite. More you acquire knowledge, more you will realize how little you know. The knowledge needs to be used for welfare of the humankind. Let your education help you in building a society in which every human being can live with utmost happiness, peace and pride. Always remember that first you have to be a good citizen. The other things will naturally follow. Higher education is the key to the national development. There is no shortcut to the success. Hard work and dedication only can give you a sustainable success. Whatever you do, do it with happiness and full commitment. I can assure you that you will achieve what you desire. Now let me come to the engineering education. Engineering and technology is very important for the advancement of the country. In last two decades, there is a flourishing of many, many engineering institutions in the country. Large number of engineering colleges have come across the country. Engineering discipline has become the most preferred destination for high school graduates. Indeed, it is a good sign. This is going to contribute to the growth of the nation. State of Maharashtra alone probably produces number of engineers equal to that produced by the entire Europe. So number-wise, India is the highest engineering producing country. One can then ask, does India have the technological impact at the global level in the same proportion? Unfortunately, the answer to this is not very positive. We are doing well to do still much better. On one hand, where there is a need to start many more new engineering and science institutions, on the other, the challenge is to maintain the standard of education at par with the global standards. In today's liberalized market, we cannot remain contented with the best at the local level. We have to compete internationally. Engineering and innovation are the synonymous terms. There cannot be engineering without innovation. Engineering is application of principles of science to achieve high material comfort. An engineer tries to control nature for human benefits. However, to do that, one must first understand the nature. A scientist precisely does that. The subject in science precisely do that. They tell you what is nature. A scientist discovers the nature for intellectual curiosity. He is interested in unveiling the nature to the finest details. An engineer, on the other hand, 
apply the scientific knowledge for the human benefits. This requires an innovative approach and non-conventional thinking. A scientist explains why the things are the way they are or why things happen the way they happen in nature. An engineer does exactly opposite. He challenges the conventional way and asks why the things cannot be done differently than what they can be done or the way they are. The engineering education therefore should provide space for innovative ideas. It should encourage unconventional thinking. An innovative idea or the innovative product is the one that makes a leap in the benefit to cost ratio in some area of endeavor. Another way of saying this is an innovation lowers the cost and or increases the benefit to a task. The cost always does not mean money. The cost can be in terms of money, difficulty level, required skills, physical pain, harm and risk thereof, inconvenience, embarrassment, boredom, pollution, etc., etc. The benefits can be in terms of effectiveness, safety, speed, pleasure, health, fun, comfort, and so on. A successful innovation is the one which increases the benefit to cost ratio to such an extent that it enables us to do something we seem we could not do at all or did not even know that we wanted to do. The web of innovation is highly interconnected, is highly complex. Each innovation brings forth a paradigm shift that enables other innovations that were unthinkable in the previous paradigm. The classic examples are internet and personal computers. The internet was unimaginable before the personal computers arrived. And many applications like e-learning, telemedicine, etc. were beyond the imagination without internet. Due to interdependability of the innovations, the time is extremely important for innovation to succeed. Sometimes even great innovations die if they arrive before their time. At times, even revolutionary innovations are not accepted by the society very, very quickly. There are certain examples, something like fluorescent lamps, when they came in existence, there was a tremendous opposition for the fluorescent lamps by the society. Similar things happened to vaccines. When the vaccines came, when it was at the experimental stage, there was a tremendous resistance from the society to implement the vaccines. But now we see the advantage of doing all this. On the other hand, some innovations like internet, cell phones, and personal computers got immediate acceptability in society. The society was almost ready to accept these innovations. Realizing the importance of innovation in 21st century, Government of India has established the National Innovation Council to promote innovative research. The University Grants Commission also has initiated schemes to establish innovation clusters in existing universities with substantial funding over the next five-year plan. The primary objective is to help develop innovative products that are India-centric. India-centric means a product which meets the needs of masses and which is inclusive, cost-effective, and sustainable. Since India is a multilingual, multicaste, multi-religion country, the innovation should cut across the boundaries of language, caste, religion. India, therefore, needs to develop its own innovation framework. Since the model for the developed nation will not be suitable for the Indian conditions. Considering the huge population of India, there is a great potential for innovation. Also, the innovation created by and for India will be affordable to majority of the global population that resides in developing and underdeveloped nations. Today, India stands at a very, very interesting juncture. 20% population of the world development-wise is above India, and 80% population is below India. So India can become role model for the 80% population of the world if we really do right innov innovation. India will become the world leader for inclusive innovation, and you as young graduates will be the stakeholders of this achievement. However, for that to happen, 
you have to set very high goals you should not compromise for anything less than the best india has high intellectual capital large market and ample resources need is of high national pride and quality consciousness you are graduating at the most opportune time in the indian history let this precious time not slip from your hand give your best and take india to the highest level in the world before i conclude i would like to say that whatever you achieve in life achieve it with high moral and ethical values keeping your head high with pride may come what do not compromise your value system march towards your excellence and make your alma mater proud of you once again a very hearty congratulations to you and the best wishes to all your future endeavors my best wishes to rajasthani college of engineering for achieving highest standard of engineering education in the years to come thank you very much jai hind jai maharashtra thank you very much shri sunil rai suni chairman board of governors and dr priti bajaj director of gh rai suni college of engineering professor shivgaukar director indian institute of technology delhi commissioner nagpur shri anup kumar vice chancellor rashtrasant tukdoji maharaj nagpur university members of management and academic bodies of the college distinguished invitees members of faculty and staff of the college dear students especially those graduating today parents present here ladies and gentlemen i am indeed very happy to be here to take part in the first graduation ceremony of gh raisoni college of engineering today also is the founders day of the college let me offer my compliments to all of you on this occasion from what i have learned this college has distinguished itself by its high level performance and is contributing to human resource development in engineering and technology contemporary india already the third largest economy in the dollar purchase parity terms and set to become the youngest or the or set to become the largest young population in the world urgently needs to raise its innova innovation as well as engineering and technological potential to move further in the present day highly competitive knowledge economy we have to capitalize on our human resource to be able to do that and this is where the quality engineering education and research institutions are of importance i compliment gh raisoni college of engineering for playing their role in this important task my congratulations to students who are graduating today some of you who are being specially recognized deserve our highest appreciation all of you have gone through your respective courses of studies and have been adjudged to be worthy of the degrees that are being awarded to you you are now ready to face the exciting world out there as an engineer or a technologist you have to be an important part of the nation building process through your respective capabilities that you have acquired here and would be acquiring elsewhere in your further career 
today there is ample scope for innovation and entrepreneurship the way our country is evolving the opportunities for the capable ones will continuously expand i wish all of you graduating today a very successful career ahead may all your dreams be fully realized we indians have a great heritage india was a premier country in the world till about 5 or 6 centuries ago we had great universities centers of learning that attracted scholars from many parts of the world we have our time tested value system after a long period of operation and foreign rule india is now bouncing back democracy has taken roots in independent india indian youth have demonstrated their capabilities through their impact both in technological as well as in economic terms here as well as in countries abroad the world is now highly interconnected and the a3 anyone anywhere and any time the a3 connected society is fast taking shape we are fast embracing knowledge driven economy worldwide technology is changing our lives faster than we would have imagined we need to be conscious about the impact of these rather rapid transitions around us we need to prepare our societies to benefit from these transitions while preventing the ill effects opportunities and the threats created by increasingly competitive interconnected world the potential for greater disparities if the policies are not managed well and the threat to time tested indian value system are some of the major challenges before our society today we must also acknowledge that apart from people who engage themselves in mass movements at different times a very large number of individuals have made key contributions in shaping the evolution <coughs> in a healthy manner and in the right direction through their wisdom sustained work and passionate contributions for example there have been people who pursued science and mathematics and made new discoveries here in india ahead of others others pursued social reforms in spite of several odds then we have had far sighted pioneers who established key industries within the country in much adverse circumstances we need such people in large numbers who can guide and shape the society as it evolves through knowledge and technology driven transitions on one side and rapid mixing of cultures driven by instant communication that takes place today on the other such people through their research and analysis can present an authentic assessment of the transitions around create innovative approaches to maximize the gains and minimize threats and prepare our youth with the capability to effectively deal with the evolving situation the very fact that indian traditions and culture have survived through centuries of external influence gives us the hope about our societies responding correctly to the changing paradigm institutions of learning have a special special role in this regard this is even more important in the context of technology institutions in today's context 
all of us have the opportunity to be a part of people both by our our as well as through the students whom we teach and mentor through our teaching we should be at the frontiers of knowledge through our research we should push the frontiers of knowledge through development of technologies the knowledge through nurturing a spirit of innovation and entrepreneurship and with strong commitment to our time tested value system we have the opportunity to be an important part of people who can shape the destiny of our nation we all must resolve to make that happen through our respective pursuits of scholarship research and engagement with the society and industry around engineering and technical education institutions and more particularly the teachers in such institutions have a special role and responsibility engineering and technology would play a key role in sustaining and enhancing the relative competitive edge of our country this would become more important as country moves up further on the economic ladder such institutions and the faculty must therefore shape young people who can confidently engage themselves with the real life world and make an impact through their engineering technological and innovative capabilities they should be able to do so in today's context as well as be ready to deal successfully with emerging change this task is crucially important for the future of india and all of us in the engineering and technological institutions have a special role and responsibility in shaping that future high quality research in our engineering and technological institutions must become comparable to the best in the world so we should be able to identify individuals and groups who do research that can be compared with the best in the world and specially support them in a very liberal manner we should engage ourselves in some grand challenge activities of importance to the nation several faculty would need to come together to address such grand challenges in a coordinated manner we should have an environment that incubates industrial enterprise making use of the research and development carried out in our institutions in my view all this would make our education more holistic and also create an ecosystem that nurtures the spirit of innovation that we so desperately need to inculcate in our younger generation while such enrichment in our institutions is a very desirable feature need to bridge a considerable gap in mutual confidence that exists between our academia and our industry we need to explore additional opportunities to work to work together in a variety of mutually beneficial ways to create conditions of mutual trust and confidence considerable credible work is necessary to create confidence on part of one side to invest in the other we need to reach a condition where in both sides see a win win situation in working together as we engage with the industry we should also explore opportunities to engage in r&d of relevance to the society there are many possibilities of technology being brought to bear on societal issues this is a particular significance in the context of agriculture and rural development our students getting exposed to such activities would not only give them a good problem solving experience but also emotionally bind them with india in the true sense 
we need to recognize that the up, above approach invariably would involve interdisciplinary efforts involving science technology engineering medicine humanities economics management and several other disciplines depending on the objective of a particular development effort opportunities for students to participate in applications of such interdisciplinary efforts to address a particular challenge enable a holistic learning experience for them this builds the capability to focus r&d to solving real life problems that need to be solved rather than looking for problems that can be solved through research one is engaged in quality of education as well as of research improves considerably in the process i do wish that all of you would give some serious thought to these issues and decide your respective course of action it should be our collective endeavor to progressively move towards making the world <coughs> a better place to live through a lifelong learning process and maintaining our institutions industry and the society interconnected with each other each one of us regardless of the career we decide to pursue can meaningfully contribute to this objective after all we are all here in this world to play our respective roles our happiness and joy of life depends on how well we play those roles to dear students i once again wish them well in their respective further pursuits i am certain they would rise progressively in their respective careers i do hope that as they rise they would retain in them a spirit of trusteeship and contribute substantially to their roots and the nation at large it is the spirit of trusteeship and the desire to support others who were not as fortunate or as successful as us that makes this world a better place to live we must remember that our happiness depends on happiness all around us once again my best wishes to you all thank you very much